Well, June, we start ramping down severe weather as the tornado threat goes down, but then we begin the hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. When you take a look at the number of storms per day since 1944, I mean, you see the trend here. From September through mid-August, this is where we get predominantly most of the storms. But you'll note a couple little bumps up here during the month of June. This is where we tend to see what? Homegrown development. Now, homegrown development far different than what we see development during the heart of the hurricane season. This is where we're tracking tropical waves moving off Africa. Oftentimes, if they form, we have over a week to be prepared. We don't have that luxury in the early part of the season. Why? Homegrown development. Now, how that works, it's different than what we see, as I mentioned, during the heart of the hurricane season. Here, it's the interaction between the jet stream and the tropics. Waves coming off Africa almost never develop this time of the year due to dry air. But at times, the jet stream can get a little farther south. And what the jet stream does is it brings fronts, it brings upper lows, and it can produce a gyre in Central America. All of those processes produce showers and thunderstorms, and if those showers and thunderstorms can sit in the warm water of the Gulf of America, Southwest Atlantic, and the Caribbean Sea, they can slowly develop into a tropical entity. And the problem is, if stuff does develop close to the United States, you typically have less than four days to prepare for a landfall. That's why it makes it so tricky. Now, nothing off the south east coast of the United States that we were worried about yesterday. That upper low is now leaving, but already, look what's going on in the Caribbean. Some showers and thunderstorms, we're gonna keep an eye on that. We still have a low chance of development late next week.